Hey guys! I hope that you guys are doing amazing wherever you are. It is 7 a.m. here in the morning. I woke up early today for some reason, so I wanted to share this video with you right away. Because I've been thinking about this, um, and I've had a lot of people say exactly the same thing to me. When I was very young, and you know, I'd be studying for my exam, or you know, I'd be at home doing my stuff, I always needed a lot of quiet, a lot of peace, a lot of quiet. I mean a lot, right? If there was a dog barking somewhere, I'd be like disturbed by it. Um, if there was like noise in the house, like if there was a TV running without any purpose, I'd be disturbed by it. I'd literally close myself in my room, switch off all the noise, put on earplugs, and sit in silence because I needed it. I needed that silence, right? As time has gone by, I am a little bit less strict with that. I can listen to music without wanting to kill myself. But even when I'm at home right now, you know, I'm at home right now in my apartment, it's very rare that I'll have the music blasting or any kind of noise in the background. I don't even have a TV. I don't own one because I just don't like the noise of it. Of course, I watch Netflix, of course, because I'm a normal human being and I love Star Trek and I'm watching Star Trek The Next Generation right now. But it's on low volume. I sit and I watch it on low volume and then after a certain time, the noise gets to be too much for me and then I need to switch it off to have peace, to have silence. Oh, glorious silence, right? A lot of people, it's weird because a lot of people talk to me and they say that they cannot work in complete silence, right? They need music blasting, they need like the TV running in the background. My sister's like that, she's an INTJ and she needs a lot of noise, like a TV in the background. She'll have her Netflix playing on her computer and then she'll have music as well playing and then she'll be reading a book. I mean, it's just insane. Just thinking about it makes me tired, right? So I think, I think it's an INFJ thing that we need a lot of quiet. Not only do we need a lot, lot of solitude, which I've spoken about, you need a lot of silent, peaceful, alone time. Silent, peaceful, alone time. A lot of times, and I know this about myself, I will just put on a comfortable set of clothes and I'll just sit in a, on a couch or my bed and just stir off into space for hours on end, minutes on end at least, for sure, right? I'll just sit there and I'll, I'll just observe my mind, I'll observe my body, I'll observe what's going on around me, I'll listen to the birds chirping or little noises like that, but I'll just be in peace, in quiet, in solitude, in absolute quiet, and I just love it. That's why I love morning times, because there's such a quiet, peaceful time, and dusk as well, like everything slows down, everyone's like going to sleep, you know, it's just like, it just kind of calms everything down. There's not that much noise. It's just, it's so nice. I just love it. That's why I'm such a morning person because I want to get up early in the morning when, you know, the sun is rising and everything is just quiet and that you could hear a pin drop and it's just the birds chirping. But birds are never intrusive in that manner, really. And then you can sit up and you can just enjoy the peace and the silence and the solitude. And if you're an INFJ at all listening or an introvert at all or an empath or an HSP, I'm guessing you're exactly the same. You need a lot of peace, a lot of quiet, and a lot of solitude. It is what makes us come alive. It is what makes us, what rejuvenates us, what refreshes us. It gives us the strength to go on. <laughs> a lot of you message me saying that, you know, this is a hard life to live because we're so sensitive and you feel everything and you don't want to feel everything. I totally get it, guys. I totally get it. You need to start learning how to rejuvenate yourself by spending time on your own. Some of us are more introverted than others. I am an ambivert, so I'm both extroverted and introverted. I have moments of introversion where I just don't want to see anyone. And then I have moments of extroversion where I just want to see everyone. Yeah, And so I go back and forth between the two. But when I'm in my introverted mode, I'm sitting at home for days on end. I don't want to see anyone. I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to inter interact with any human being because I'm refreshing and rejuvenating myself, you know? What happens is that we have like a certain energy level, right? And it fluctuates depending on what we're doing. What with introversion or with INFJs, we are at a certain level, but then when we interact with people, it deprecates, deprecates. it reduces, <laughs> it depreciates, right? So perhaps we're at this level and we meet someone and it goes down a little bit more. And then we give a little bit more and it goes down, it goes down, and then until we're at empty. You don't want to get too empty, guys. I know INFJs do that a lot. I, I do that myself. I get to empty and then I realize, shit, it's going to take me two, three, four, five days to recover from this. Why did I do this to myself? So what I want you guys to do is to realize where is your energy level all the time. Constantly be putting yourself in a feedback loop. Where am I right now? How do I feel? How much energy do I have left, right? Am I close to empty? Or am I getting there? 
if you are like 20% away from empty, leave right away, leave right away, go back home, rejuvenate, and then go out again. Do you know what I'm saying? Do not let yourself get to that empty point because it's gonna take much longer for you to recover than if you were at 20% because it's not as bad, it's not as bad. And how do you rejuvenate? Is through silence, through peace, to solitude. Sitting on our bed or our couch by ourselves, staring off into space. I do that a lot. I just sit and stare off into space. If someone was dating me, thank God they're not. But if they were, they would think I'm absolutely insane unless they were an INFJ themselves, which I don't think I would date an INFJ. I don't think, I think that'd be too much, right? But if they were, they would think I'm insane because I spend a lot of time doing that. I'll just sit and as I energies do, I'll start laughing to myself randomly. I'll start crying to myself randomly. I'll start smirking to myself randomly because I'm thinking about all these things and I'm replaying, replica replicating all these events in my head, thinking about it, reliving it. So much fun, right? But most people are not going to get it. What we need to do as INFJs is to find to create the space for ourselves to be in silence and solitude as much as possible so we can rejuvenate, so we can get back up to this high level of energy. So when we go back out again, we're able to give, 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 give until we get to that point where you know that's it. I need to go back in to my cave to rejuvenate again. Like for me, because I have very hard boundaries, like seriously hard, I've created them over time because I'm much older than most of you, I'm guessing. Because I've created these boundaries over time, I have very strict rules on how much time I'll spend with people. And mostly, mostly it's very little. I'll spend maybe max of four or five hours with a person or with individuals or with human beings. And then I go back into my cave. I cannot do more than that. I cannot and I refuse to do more than that because I know that what I need to do is I need to spend most of my energy creating, creating these videos. I'm a writer as well, so I write a lot. I have a website, I blog. I mean, I do a bunch of different things, a lot of creative work. I don't want to spend it on people. I think it's a waste of my time specifically because I'm a creative person. So I want to spend it on things like this. Right? I know exactly when I hit my point, exactly when I hit my point. And as soon as that happens, no matter what's going on, no matter how much fun everyone's having, no matter, no matter how much FOMO I might have, which is very rare, I will leave. And my friends know that. It's really funny because they'll, I'll get up all of a sudden. It's like everyone's having fun, la 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 la, and boom, I hit that moment and I, I get up right away because I know I need to leave. I cannot delay it any further. And so I get up right away and instantaneously they're like, you're leaving, you're going home, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, they know me by now and they know that there's nothing they can say to convince me to stay. There is nothing, guys. I will not stay. Once I'm done and I'm over that limit, I'm going home. No matter what the hell's going on, I'm going home because it is absolutely important for me to get home, to rejuvenate and to get up again the next day to do it all over again. Make sense? So you guys need to learn if you're a younger INFJ to have those strong boundaries. Don't worry about everyone else. They're going to adjust. It's funny how quickly people adjust to me and my quirks. As soon as I started telling them, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to leave. My energy level is low and I'm tired and I want to go home and sleep. As soon as I started telling them that eventually after the first two or three times of doing it, they knew that this is how I am and I'm not going to compromise and I'm not going to compromise, right? No matter what's going on, no matter how much fun we're having, my energy level is so much more important. There's always another day to have more fun. But today, I need to rejuvenate and go back home. And so they get used to it. So don't worry about it. People will get used to your quirks. Just train them. They need some training. And so one or two times, you'll have to kind of be like, no, I'm sorry, I have to go. But eventually, they'll be like, well, she's not going to budge, so let her freaking go. That's what people say. Okay, you're going home? Cool. Go home. We'll see you next time. Awesome. Easy peasy, I walk home or go home, whatever it is, and I'm so relieved. All of a sudden, I'm like, okay, good. My energy level is not depleting anymore. I'm not giving anymore. I'm calm. I can go home, sit in my peaceful solitude. It's like the best thing on this planet. After, after a long day of being around people, to go home and sit down in that silence, it's like ecstasy to me. It's like nectar. It's like honey. It's like, it's like the best thing ever. It's like the best thing ever. <laughs> oh, man. I'm probably insane a little bit, but that's okay. So yeah, I love that step. I love that moment where I can just sit in quiet and solitude and like, phew, all right, cool. I'm alone now and everything is fine. 
everything is fine. <laughs> makes sense? Alright, this video is very long. I guess I have a lot to say about peace and solitude. I hope it makes sense to you guys. Let me know what you guys think about it. Let me know what your, you know, experience with it is. I'd love to hear from you guys. I love all the comments you guys are sending my way. If you guys are interested, you can join my team at patreon.com slash boom shaka. That's my name. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.